welcome to the second uh, slot of this year's EuroBSD Um With us is um, Archie uh, Gochowski, um, who's been working on uh, fuzzing uh, file systems in NetBSD using the American fuzzing, fuzzing loop. So uh, give him a nice welcome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Maciej, and as, uh, as was spotted, I started working on NetBSD fuzzing with American Fuzzy Loop and Kickoff. So I have this pleasure to be your presenter before the lunch break. <laughs> so it's not ideal, but hopefully we'll be able to make it. Uh, let's start with the outline. So today I will be talking about the fuzzing, but the fuzzing is part is part of larger initiative inside the NetBSD which is NetBSD uh, quality assurance. Uh, so I will, first of all, we'll touch on this topic. And also I have a couple more, more slides uh, what new was done in this area. And then I will move, I will touch a little bit what the fuzzing is. Probably everyone is already familiar what the fuzzing is, uh, but just as a reference and some background, I'm kind of obligated to do this. Um, then we'll talk about the work that I was doing for porting the American fuzzy loop to fuzz NetBSD kernel and file system subsystem in general, because I'm mostly interested in file systems. And some work for coverage and cake-off that I was uh, doing with some members of the community. Then I will show some basic fuzzing setup and how we can easily do the uh, fuzzing of the file system. So I will try to convince you that fuzzing with, in this way is really simple and everyone who is writing some kernel code can also do this by its own. So you don't have to do some very complicated setup with multiple virtual machines, some servers. You can just do this locally, uh, just like a very uh, low entry bar. And uh, end up with some conclusions. And as I said earlier, I have also a couple of slides from my colleague Camille uh, about the state of NetBSD QE. Uh, so I plan to do those slides after and then I will be able to take uh, questions. Uh, so as I said, uh, we have this in initiative inside the community uh, to improve the quality of NetBSD. So we have many different uh, ideas and a couple of people working uh, as a community to improving the quality. And this started a couple of years ago when we got uh, some security researcher finding multiple bugs in NetBSD. Some of them were in some kind of stale code or not frequently used. Uh, but as I remember correctly, there was something like 80, uh, 80 NetBSD bugs, which were fixed very quickly, but uh, people started thinking, okay, so how we can make sure that uh, our quality uh, as a small community will be able to scale and how we can improve, how we can improve the quality. Uh, so we have sanitizers, um, free and NetBSD is currently very well sanitized across the BSDs. And so recently we got MK sanitizers, which is a really nice tool uh, to get our user space uh, for, uh, for fuzzing, because when you are doing the fuzzing, you usually also would like to run with sanitizers, a uh, couple of kernel sanitizers, leak sanitizers, address space sanitizers, undefined behavior sanitizer. Uh, we have a security team, so if you find any bugs or have some concerns, you can talk with them directly. So my part of the work is related to fuzzing with AFL, uh, American Fuzzy Loop, but also there are a couple more uh, fuzzers. Uh, this, this summer we had a couple of students working on syscaller, finding a lot of interesting things inside the syscaller. Uh, we also get uh, people from, I think, from uh, Google to run also the Syscaller because Syscaller is a Google project on NetBSD. And even yesterday we got 
couple of reports, I think three or four uh, crashes. Um, AFL Triforce, another uh, Google Summer of Code project, uh, also very interesting. And we also have uh, RAMP kernels, which are a very interesting topic. I won't be talking too much about RAMP kernels today, uh, but also encourage you to research a little bit this area. So there are other things like stack protector, uh, static code analysis, and hardware uh, back mitigation that lots of people are looking after. I'm not very familiar actually in this part, uh, but also if you have any other idea how we can improve the quality, uh, feel, feel free to join us. The simple way is just go to NetBSD QE uh, on Freenode. Uh, there's a couple of people over there. So I also started uh, this uh, spring working on the AFL, some kind of, kind of like a not very old, not very old a member of this community, but I found this really nice and also uh, I think the also en entry bar is very low and you can start doing some interesting things quickly. Uh, so starting with the buzzing, I, I won't be talking too much about this, but uh, just a simple reference, it's how you can write the simpler fuzzer, you can just get some random data. Uh, let's assume that we have some binary that you like to fuzz, and this binary take as our argument a path to the file. This file have to, this file can be, for example, 1K in size, so we can just get a thousand bytes from random and put them as a file and then run the fuzzing binary uh, with this file. So this actually is the simplest way that you can do. Uh, from the other side, as you can imagine, the space of all possible inputs is uh, exponentially, exponentially large and most of those inputs won't really fit to your program because usually the program expects some particular format of the data so you may have a program that needs uh, some image, for example, uh, JPEG or PNG. Uh, you may have something that uh, requires some document. So if you are fuzzing in this way and just getting the random data, you most likely will be iterating over and over again on some header checks on some, ver some entry code of the program and you won't be executing the paths. Uh, so how how we can do this uh, fuzzing process much uh, smarter. Uh, so we can start thinking, first of all, um, if, if we want about this problem, we can try to improve somehow the way how we generate the input. So we can, for example, have some idea what the input uh, format is. So if we know that we are fuzzing the uh, for example, uh, images, we can take some in some uh, input uh, as an example, like uh, the image file, and then try to change and play with bits from it. And this kind of this is kind of the way how mutu mutu mutuation fuzzing works. So mutuation fuzzers essentially take some seed and then have some idea about the let's call it grammar or structure of uh, structure of the file if you will and then play with this structure flip the bits from one side put some things uh, in other section and run the program mm, by design most of them do not uh, do not take the uh, do not take the feedback from your program and from the other side uh, this feedback thing is something that is used commonly in evolutionary fuzzing. So evolutionary fuzzer is the fuzzer that iterate many times and observe the behavior of the program. So the simplest thing about, uh, the simplest way to think about this is you can have some uh, feedback um, coming from your program, which for example can be execution time. So if you know that this thousand of bytes uh, of all zeros execute, for example, for one second, and then if you flip one byte somewhere, and then your program will execute this input for 10 seconds, that means maybe this one bit really does matter and move your input to some other execution path. So maybe this is something that you should consider during your fuzzing. And over the time, 
uh, we create another generations of those inputs and also we take uh, we take the uh, we take the feedback after every generation so this is also the way how american fuzzy loop works uh, someone may argue american fuzzer also is doing some mutational of the state and that is also correct because today's software mostly is very complicated so it's not just one or another one but you combine those approaches <coughs> Um, so as I said, um, AFL is AFL is an um, uh, evolutionary puzzle which take a coverage as a, as a feedback. So we have a feedback loop based on the coverage of the code. So AFL uh, use the map or array of the pair's source and destination branches. Uh, so the way how it was originally implemented, when you compile your program. Uh, you compile with specific AFL compiler. This compiler do some custom instrumentation, so it put additional inst instructions on every uh, branch in your program. So then, while you are executing, you have some shard memory, and inside this shard memory, every time when you hit the branch, you have a couple of instructions which see which uh, see the source branch and destination branch. So you get this pair, and you put this uh, pair. To the array, uh, because of that, the father get a hint. Okay, so we saw already, so I saw already this path in the execution graph. So this path already was covered, or maybe this path wasn't covered, and I can take this as a hint as my feedback to create another um, to create another uh, generation of the input. From the other side, in NetBSD uh, eight. <coughs> We had a Kcov coverage device, which provide us a PC trace, program counter trace, and comparison trace. So the way how PC trace work, uh, you run your process, and then inside the kernel, we also have instrumentations, uh, which are done during the compilation. So you have to compile your NetBSD kernel F with uh, option in order to use Kcov. You cannot get just a uh, normal image and run coverage on it. You need to recompile it. Uh, so it's very simple. You just go to the config and you enable Kcov, um, and it should work. So then you have the, every time when you execute the kernel code for specific process, you can collect the coverage data inside the buffer, which is inside the kernel space. And then the buffer also is mapped or can be mapped because you don't have to do it. Uh, but this is usually your case if you are doing the fuzzing. Uh, so this buffer then is mapped to the user space by mmap, and you can see uh, the coverage data. Uh, so in order to make uh, American fuzzy loop works on NetBSD uh, with Kcov, I needed to uh, fix a little bit this uh, tracing. So as I said, we had the a list, long list of the addresses in the kernel space, and we need to con I needed to convert it uh, to get the different uh, to, to essentially create the 64k buffer uh, for the fuzzing. And so this conversion is very simple. You just go for the whole list and you see the current uh, PC counter and the previous one. And then you do the XOR on them. Of course, you also have to make sure that you are in line in the size of your array. And that's mostly it. Uh, but we had some discussion how to do this properly. So the first idea was, OK, so let's leave uh, coverage device addresses and do the conversion on the user space side, which end up that this is not a very good idea because NetBSD kernel is a little bit more verbose uh, that we expected. So your cause of your uh, trace can be like uh, multiple thousands of entries and doing the work, first of all, inside the kernel collecting and then uh, doing conversion in the user space doesn't really wor work well because you are going through the same list twice and inside the fuzzing, the performance is really important. Uh, so I. I decided to do this inside the kernel. Um, 
uh, to do this inside the kernel as a kind of like a addition to the cake of. Uh, other things uh, that American fuzzy loop require was change, just simple things like changing the shared memory to do mmap for the for the uh, coverage device, opening the files. So not much here uh, inside the user space to change. Um, but as I said, because I put AFL inside the kernel space, uh, we were talking uh, a little bit how to do this properly. And uh, there was some work, for example, done uh, in Linux, uh, where people decided to provide additional trace type, which will be AFL, as, as in order mm, to handle this correctly which is not ideal because AFL is not really the tracing format. It's more like the stan standard for the program. Uh, so in order to handle this, uh, we modify the cake of device. So there's, there will be uh, some changes coming soon uh, where the module, where you can have your own module for coverage. So you can register your model for doing the coverage and this registration require to fill the a structure. So this structure essentially require you to provide open free operation. You will have a hooks to coverages. Right now we have PC and uh, CMP coverages, yeah, but in future there will be more. And after you register your uh, plugin, when you do anything uh, from user space, uh, to coverage device, you will be hitting those functions. Uh, but from the other side, you will still use the same code as a cake of device. So we, we won't have duplication of the code. And also we'll have com one common code uh, for dealing with the coverage, which from my perspective is a really good thing. Uh, so as I said, generic uh, cake of module uh, which move the responsibility of doing anything, do processing anything with coverage data, move it to the plugin. Uh, we still handle the raw coverage inside the cake-off. Uh, data is easily accessible using the callbacks. Uh, we can support potentially multiple different fuzzing. For every fuzzer, you just need to write your simple module, which is usually just take a look uh, for example, um, AFL module or uh, like a sample module that also uh, was written. And then you can see, okay, so which operations essentially will be different uh, from your, and then you implement them and you should, should be, um, you should be ready to go. Also, we can do stuff like uh, filtering the coverage data, which is also important. Uh, so the simple setup of the fuzzer I describe a little bit uh, the shard memory, how it works, and also cake off. So we have a coverage device, uh, the plugin. So uh, the whole setup will require a couple of more components. Uh, so we need also a wrapper for AFL. So the wrapper itself uh, is something that is specific to your type of fuzzing. For instance, in my interest, there are file systems. So I need some way to get my code executed inside the kernel, inside the file system stack somehow. So I need to get my wrapper and write inside this wrapper some mode operation. I need also to prepare the block device, but I won't have block device straight away. So I need to get a file, uh, pretend that this file is a block device and then run the mount on the block device. And during that, I will collect the whole coverage data from the syscalls, from uh, VFS, from in-core file system, um, then translate it to AFL, and we'll have everything inside the memory. Uh, the fuzzer itself will do the anal will analyze this data, and will do some modification and create different uh, different files, uh, that different generations of the inputs. Um, the next thing that I found really interesting in this project was I, I had this I had this setup, and uh, then I started thinking, okay, so I would like to run some kind of hello world for fuzzing, uh, so I create some simple 
uh, head award for Fuzzer, which is usually, which is something that is in many different fuzzing uh, tutorials that you can find online. So you just write, you just hard code some magical pattern, and then you get input from uh, from your father and you are trying to break the magic. And you see how how fast it takes, for example, to break something like four, five, six characters uh, magical password, hard coded password. Uh, so I run this. And it was running and running, and after a week, my father was still not able to break the magic password. And they started thinking, okay, so uh, I know we usually think about the father as a, some kind of like a pr magic process that just take a program as a black box and execute on it. But if you essentially would like to see what the data are visible for your for your father, what you can do. To, for example, as I did the debug the process, I get the list of the trays for my for my mount process. Uh, I translate it to the particular functions, and then I was not able to find anything related to my code, which was kind of surprising. So then I get all of those traces and count unique entries for those traces. What what I found was essentially we have um first couple of hundred entries was essentially the code the kernel code not related to our fuzzing and especially we had a lot of uh a lot of uh, virtual memory operations the page faults uh, so there was about 20000 entries and from them 1500 for example was related to the page faults so my initial thought was hang on the moment because the the way how AFL works it detects the part of the source and destination branch so in theory we should be able to see that okay so this is something that we see but this uh, but we already saw this execution branch because it is in the map uh, but it turns out that you can have multiple different combination of those source destinations uh, so essentially you're not fuzzing the file system, you're fuzzing just virtual memory subsystem. Um, so how, how we can fix that? Um, so first of all, I was thinking, okay, so I can, because the instrumentation are uh, compiled time operation, I can just go to every of those functions, every couple thousand of them, and change uh, and remove them from the trace. So I can add no instrument function uh, keyword from GCC. And let's try this. And as it turned out, uh, because at that time we still had GCC 7, so GCC 7 uh, for compiling the kernel, and GCC 7 does not, uh, it does have this keyword, but essentially this is not working for 7. Uh, so in order, to make it work, I started compiling the kernel of GCC 8. That was a long story, a lot of warnings. I don't know if anyone compiled with GCC 8, uh, the kernel. Not, not many people. <laughs> As, but I realized maybe it will be easier to get um, to get those information in runtime. So we can so I create a blacklisting of those addresses. So how it works? You get your addresses for the function that you would like to exclude from the fuzzing, uh, put them to the list, and uh, IFL have IOCTO operation where you can put addresses to the list. This list in the kernel space is sorted, so finding the entry is not the big overhead. It's still some operation, which probably is better to do this uh, statically, but from the other side, I wanted also to keep going with my research. And uh, and then we have uh, the filter, which every time when you have a trace and you end up in the virtual memory, you just do not include this to your uh, to your coverage data, which reduce the space a lot. Uh, so coming back to the coverage benchmark, so that's the coverage benchmark. So we have six characters that our fuzzer need to. I need to uh, need to guess, so it's, I call it panic lottery. So before, 
so small reminder, those are really raw, really approximate numbers. You shouldn't quote them anywhere. It's just the way how I was playing with the fuzzer. But at the very beginning, I ran my process to just guess this input for two weeks, and it was not able to. It was not able to win the panic lottery. After applying the filtering, I was able to fix that in less than 24 hours. And also, I used the same uh, seed input. So it makes sure also that because sometimes the fuzzing can also be tricky. It depends what are your input data, what uh, your what are your kind of starting condition. So I make sure that this is this uh, this is this is the fuzzer see the same thing. So I run this on the virtual machine. I get the snapshot and run the second one with the uh, second one with uh, the filtering enable. Uh, if you do something similar in user space, this is something that. Uh, every how to do AFL fuzzing manual in internet is doing as a first kind of um, first slide. Uh, you will be able to break this in approximately a couple of hours. Uh, so the next thing, uh, I, I spoke about the coverage. Uh, so in order to, uh, so next step will be uh, to provide the wrapper. So. For my case, I need to. I wanted to fuzz, for example, FFS file system. So um, we need, first of all, to make sure that we set up our uh, process for fuzzing, and we will be executing the same, and we will be executing the correct uh, part of the kernel code. So in this case, we are focusing about the mount, but mount came also with, uh, we need a device that can be mounted, so also you need to do the preparation, you need to do the cleaning. So the good way is to start with bash and then move to the C, or you don't have to move always to the C, you can do C++, Rust, and anything that provides you good performance. Uh, but the remi reminder here is uh, performance is the key for the fuzzing, so do not use the bash script as a mounter, as a uh, do not use the bash script as uh, part of your fuzzing loop because that will slow down the process a lot and the fuzzing of the kernel is already slow because you because of the way how uh, the communication with the kernel works so make sure that you get everything from your mount script from your mount uh, code and try to be as close to raw syscalls because the performance is very crucial. Uh, okay, so let's then do the local setup. So um, we have already our wrapper. Uh, we'll, create the, we'll create the file. Uh, in this case, that would be ATK uh, of size, VND config to create it uh, as a, to create it as a block device. Then create uh, the new file system on it. Someone may ask why you don't just leave your father to guess uh, the structure of the file system, but you already give it as a hint that uh, this is the structure of the file system. Uh, you, can also, you can also get just a zeros and then run your father on with just a zeros, uh, but that's, that will take some time for your father to guess. And also, in, I was working on this blacklisting uh, so I was thinking it's probably a good idea. Uh, it's probably a good idea to have your father works on already pre-prepared uh, set of the data, and then you can just run your father. You can then just run your father uh, with k minus k switch. Uh, this is also something new, and you need to provide the mount script. Uh, be careful with this because essentially you're just fuzzing the binary that you're running on, so do not cut the branch that you're sitting off. Um, and every time I talk about this, people ask me how many bugs did you find, how, uh, how many kernel crashes are you able to report. Uh, so let's do something very simple to also inst let's show people um, that we are not only finding the kernel crashes. Uh, so here I have my directory with the fuzzer. Uh, run some, cut. 
Uh, so let's run this script. The same thing. Run the fuzzing. Get to be slow. 90 operation per second. Bam. And something went wrong. Uh, so this actually is not something that is wrong in our script, but this is actually the bug inside the kernel. So what is happening? We are doing the mount. Uh, I have a little bit uh, small time, uh, but we are doing the mount on slash mnt1, and we can see. Mm, we cannot. So we have mnt1 inside the kernel, but if we will try to do any operation now after mounting on corrupted value, there is no file. Uh, stop mnt1. This also doesn't work. Also, don't work. Uh, so during my fuzzing uh, of the FFS file system. Uh, I also find some kind of like a logical bug. So this, for example, is not uh, this is not a simple crash that you may expect from the from the fuzzing the kernel. Uh, but this is also something that you may find that there are some logical uh, bugs, which also would be nice uh, to handle. Okay. Okay. So I will probably skip the uh, the conclusions because I have ten minutes. Uh, some resources, so we have uh, NetBSD blog. It's a really good place to find your uh, to find to find uh, some information what we are doing inside the kernel for the QE. And uh, there are also two posts that I uh, that I provided about the fuzzing with AFL. Mm, I would like then to move to the another slide deck uh, that I got from Camille. Um, okay, so uh, this came from Camille. He unfortunately was not able to join us today. Um, but to give also some other uh, some other things that are done for QE. Uh, so as I said earlier, uh, we have MK Saint-Arger, which is a really important thing for quality in the kernel, uh, which essentially is your mm, is your starting point if you are trying to do the fuzzing of the user space uh, because if you are if you will try to compile everything with different sanitizers it's almost impossible i was trying to compile uh, fsdb and it's, it's it's really hard so mk sanitizer is really important and currently is covering about 95 percent of uh, things that uh, we have in um, in user space, there's still a lot of uh, there's still a lot of issues over there. So you are more than welcome to help with that. Um, so MK sanitizers essentially provides you a way to use other sanitizers and compile everything with the same settings. So you can have other sanitizer, undefi undefined behavior sanitizers, thread sanitizers, uh, memory sanitizer, leak sanitizers. Uh, Additionally, we also have uh, lip fuzzer, uh, stack hardening, X-ray, which is also coming in the future. Um, yeah, so I already said uh, MK Synthesis so already works and passes about 95% of upstream tests. Um, Hundred issues still to fix to be fixed. Um, Okay, uh, so then we can also take a look about the fuzzing the kernel code inside the user space. So this is the RAM kernel fuzzing. Uh, here, uh, people also use the hang fuzz and uh, together with RAM kernel. Uh, so this is the way how you build MK sanitizer. Um, nothing special here. Uh, you install the hang fuzz. Hang fuzz is a little bit more complicated uh, project than something that I just shows you in the terminal. So we need to spend a little bit more time uh, to configure it properly. Uh, you need to do the mount for different subsystems for the ramp, uh, change the root. Uh, then you also, for a ramp kernel, you also need kind of the wrapper because the ramp kernel is also user space library. Uh, so as I use the wrapper for using uh, for just uh, fuzzing the kernel is something similar uh, for the RAM. Starting the Hongfu's fuzzer, 
with uh, some dedicated corpuses and then observe the crashes. So 60 minutes after starting the phasing, uh, we got the kernel crash for the also for the mount. So this is uh, so this is also fuzzing the mount, but not inside your kernel, but actually inside your RAM, which is running in your user space. Uh, so we need to go through a lot of uh, through a, a lot of logs. So I, for example, found this a little bit uh, tricky, um, but it's, it's easily doable. It can be improved a little bit. Um, but this was, uh, I think this was uh, reported a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so you have the, uh, you have essentially out of, out of band for, uh, for your image. And after you found your bug, you fix the bug, you repeat, and uh, you found another bug. And this is how we improve the quality. Uh, so, Kernel sanitizers, I already covered them. Uh, they are so undefined behavior, uh, run all, on, on all ports. Uh, kernel Kalev is kind of a, our special uh, sanitizers. Uh, there are still a couple of things that are not merged yet. Uh, for example, I saw Maxim running uh, thread sanitizers and will already be able to catch uh, first back using it. Uh, so the project that I uh, show on second on one of my first slides, uh, syscaller. So syscaller was uh, run by Shinite as a uh, Google, Google Summer of Code. Uh, you can also read on our NetBSD blog uh, about it. So currently also was uh, improved. Uh, improved by Vladimir from Google and as I said he started finding some crashes and this is running 24 by 7 and um, and some fuzzing our kernel. Another interesting project Three Fallers AFL uh, done by Anku uh, also as a part of Google Summer Code so he was also able to find a lot of interesting uh, bugs uh, also using sanitizers most of them were already fixed, but also you can read about them on our blog. Um, another interesting thing uh, done by Maxim, uh, there was uh, some some USB device. So currently Maxim came with some uh, pseudo device, software device that is able to just inject the packets uh, to the USB stack. Uh, so right now Camille has some idea to connect uh, the fuzzer to this device and then start fuzzing the USB uh, stack, uh, and what else? Uh, improvements, improvements to vir virtualization. Uh, okay, so the ending slide. Um, <coughs> very needed action for everyone. Uh, validate your kernel code with sanitizers. So right now we have a lot of um, good tools in NetBSD. We have we did a lot of progress with sanitizers. Uh, so if you are doing the fuzzing, you do the fuzzing plus sanitizing. Uh, yeah, and there are still a lot of things uh, that you need to improve in the future, but slowly but surely uh, we are progressing. Uh, yeah, so I already covered all of those. Yeah, so that's all that I have for today. So do you have any time for the questions? Who has a question? Stop being shy. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you guys.